so today we're going to talk about how to use our existing run sign up donation and fundraising features to maximize fundraising for your races. I'm Natalie, by the way. Hi. <laughs> okay, so some of the things we'll cover is our new donation UX, just a quick overview. Since we're limited on time today, we're not actually going to drill into every single screen, but I will show you the new layout. And if you have questions about really digging in and setting up donations and fundraising, you can stop into our demo room. We have account managers there and they'll be able to help you fine tune and tweak any of your settings. Same for fundraising. And then we'll cover some of the features that we have to maximize donations during registration and outside of registration, maximizing fundraising, and then Facebook fundraising. Just a quick overview. So about one, two weeks ago, we released our new donation and fundraising screens on the race dashboard. Our UX team worked really hard on it. It's so pretty now. So what's different? Really, functionality-wise, nothing is different. We've just split donations and fundraising into two different tabs on the dashboard. Everything is a lot cleaner and a lot more intuitive. And now it's easier for you to find what you need when you need it. So our old layout was a little bit overwhelming and now it's not. All of the functionality is the same. Don't worry, we didn't take anything away. We just cleaned it up. And here's how it looks now. So before, everything was on one big, very, very long page. Now it's cleaned up and broken into different sections. And then the same for our fundraising UX. So with underneath fundraisers, we have two different, we have multiple tabs, but now it's easily broken into individual fundraising settings and team fundraising settings. And our fundraising pages, so this is the old fundraising page and then our new fundraising page. So now you can have, as a fundraiser, you can upload multiple images, have a scrolling banner. The social sharing icons are much more easier to see. The donate button is right at the top. Before it was down, you had to scroll down. So now we're trying to get more people to donate to your fundraising page right up front. As I said at the beginning of the presentation, we do have very detailed blogs. You can search them on runsignup.blog. I did change the detailed donation fundraising and team fundraising into tiny URLs, which ended up not being so tiny, but run sign up donations, run sign up fundraising, run sign up fundraising team. So a little bit easier to remember. And in those blogs, we go through every single one of those sections in the tab to explain how to set things up, what the settings are, and so that'll be easier for you to read than what I could cover in a presentation. Maximizing donations. How many people here have a race with donations turned on already? Okay, great. We're gonna cover some of the things. If some of these settings seem basic to you, that's great, it means you're doing a great job but you would be surprised how many people don't do some of the things that I'm going to cover. Adding a donation description. We do have quite a few races that don't actually set up a donation description or a charity description. We call this e-begging. It's just like if someone came up to you on the street and said, give me $5, the natural response is for what? It's the same thing during registration. Make it clear what your charity is, what your mission is, where the funds are going, how they will be used. So the more clear you make it, the more donations you'll receive. All right, and then same thing for a charity description. If you're a race, you can add multiple charities during your registration process. These will show during registration. When you add a charity to a race, you can give the charity access to it so they can customize their description and their confirmation email and their logo and their URL. So give them that control to customize all of that on their own because your charity partners know what their mission is and they'll know how to phrase things in a way that has worked well for them in the past to recruit donations. And then donation levels. So Allison covered this this morning in the Race Trends presentation. It's so important because without setting up donation levels, 
all you'll see is the custom amount field. A lot of people think it's easier because they don't want to present donation levels. They don't want people to think, oh, we don't want them to think they have to donate $25. But actually that open donation field is intimidating. A lot of people don't have a lot of extra money to spare. So when they see that open donation field, they might not think that $5 is going to go a long way. So by having those donation levels in smaller increments, as Allison said this morning, 70% of all of the donations that process on run sign up are under $25. So adding the different levels in smaller increments, you'll really see a lot more donations being made during registration. Okay, customize your donation confirmation email. So our default confirmation email says, Thank you for making your donation too. And then it will have the donor's name, the donation date. A lot of people don't take the time to customize this email. So adding a short little thank you message, again, explaining how the funds will be used, how the donations have helped your charity or grant recipients in the past really does go far. And then make sure to add your EIN and your address to this confirmation email. Legally, you have to have that in a donation confirmation email. If you don't, we assume that you'll be sending out donation thank you letters at another time, which most people don't. And then donation matching text. I copied this from Semper Fi Fund. A lot of people will work for larger companies that have a donation matching program. Many people don't think of adding text to the donation confirmation email, but it's something so simple that goes so far. My brother-in-law works for Google. They have a donation matching program. If he makes a donation, he prints out that receipt, brings it to HR, they match it. So a lot of people don't think to even ask about that. And then we do have an integration with HEP data. So you can search if you work for a company that has a donation matching program. And then in the beginning of 2020, we will be adding an integration with double the donation. Charity checkbox. Brian covered this in the quick hits presentation this morning. This is one of my favorite features that we have for donations on run sign up. I like to call it the grocery store feature. So when you are at the grocery store checking out and they ask you, would you like to donate a dollar to help kids in need or whatever? This is similar. If you have a charity for your race, you can turn on the donation checkbox, you do have to set a flat dollar amount. We find that anywhere in between one to five dollars works best. We do not show this checkbox if someone makes a donation during registration. We only show it if they skip the donation page. So it's another way to try and prompt them to make a donation again. And then on average, seems like a crazy high number, but it's been pretty consistent across all of the races that have turned this on. 12% of registrants will check that box. And then if you have multiple charities, one of the settings that you can use is to rotate charities. So if you have four, if you start the registration process, you'll see one, you'll see two, you'll see three. So. Brian also covered this this morning, but donation discounts. If you are using donation discounts, add a tab on your race page, add it to your race description, really highlight it. Something like want to run for free, that catches people's attention, but if you're setting it up so that if they make a $100 donation, you're going to give them a free registration, sometimes people can't afford to pay a $50 registration fee or whatever, but they'll make that $100 donation because that's a tax write-off. And then, so it's weird. It's a psychology thing, but people are really attracted to it. You can add that as a tab on the front of your website, like the, on the home page? Yeah, so in the back end of the race, it's under race registration custom sections. You can add as many custom sections as you want and turn those into tabs on your race page. I would stop by the demo room and either Whitney, Whitney or Herman can walk you through that or I can show you that later today as well. Thank you. Could you put that on your cover page and have it go right to that? Like if yeah. you want to run for free. Mm-hmm. I like that idea. Look at you. This, again, seems obvious. I've learned this from Kathy. Kathy is one of the best people I know at asking for donations. But don't be afraid to ask 
for donations. Make it clear on your race page that they can donate. We have that donate button, but adding an, an extra tab or even like a section on the cover page or on the race page, that helps. Add it to your confirmation email. Thanks for registering. We're raising funds for blah, blah, blah to help with blah, blah, blah. And then you can add a donate link, a donate button, whatever you want. And then incomplete registration emails. I see a lot of emails forwarded to me from race directors that are, what's your charity? How are these funds used? So it's helpful to also add that to the incomplete registration email. We see that you started to register, but you haven't finished. What's holding you back? Do you know that as part of our race, we're raising money for Semper Fi Fund to help critically ill and injured service members. Did I get it? Okay. Or can't make it to the race, donations are always welcome and you can add a donate button. And then newsletters. Charity success stories are chicken soup for the soul. I strongly believe that. I feel like I see a lot of GoFundMe pages in my Facebook news feed and highlighting something that happened to someone and why donating to this GoFundMe page goes far. And there's a lot of GoFundMe pages that have a tremendous amount of donations when they have warm and fuzzy stories like that. So as a charity, use your newsletters, use registration follow-up emails to share your warm and fuzzy stories with your registrants and your fundraisers and your donors. Okay, so maximizing fundraising. The default fundraising message, so... Actually, this is something that changed with our new fundraising UX. Default fundraising messages are now required for both individual and team fundraising pages. So the default fundraising message, this is the text that is going to populate and appear on someone's fundraising page when they create one. These can be charity specific. So if you have eight different charities, all of your charities have the option to customize their specific default fundraising message. This is another place that the mission for the charity or for the race could be highlighted, telling people how the funds are used and things like that. If I create a fundraising page, this text is going to populate for me. I can customize it. I can add to it. I can completely delete it, but you'd be surprised how many fundraisers don't take the time to customize that message. So for the fundraisers who are choosing not to do anything, but still want to share their page, you're making sure that when I'm spreading the word that I'm fundraising for San Diego Humane Society, I'm spreading their mission in the way that they want it. Team fundraising. So you don't have to turn on team fundraising, but we highly recommend it. So there's a few different reasons. If I create a team fundraising page, I'm going to then share it to all of my friends and family members to encourage them to join my team. So it's going to recruit more runners for your race and more fundraisers for your race. It's also, if you think about it, if I want to do a benefit or a fundraiser at Soup Plantation, it's easier for me to do that and coordinate that event with my friends and my team members. So you'll see that we actually have some slides coming up in our next presentation, but there are some teams that have raised crazy amount of money, have crazy amount of team members, and they're just more motivated and encouraged to keep going strong all the way out, all the way through their fundraising life cycle. When you have team fundraising turned on, you can customize the team fundraiser created notification email. So we have default text in there. We tell them what their team fundraising page link is, but take the time to customize that. Tell them to share it on Facebook. Tell them to email it. Tell them how to use the fundraiser email templates, which I'll show you next. And then team fundraising prizes work really well. A lot of Komen events do this. You can set up different types of fundraising teams like friends and family, corporate, church, school, going down the list in my head of what Komen Philadelphia sets up. I think they have like six. And then they do prizes. doesn't have to be a big prize. I think they give like ice cream cones. People just like to be recognized. You can bring up your top team on the stage. You can just talk about them at the award ceremony and how much they raised. But prizes and recognition will really motivate people to fundraise more. And then we have a team roster. So if you have team fundraising enabled, you can customize the team member information that the team captain can see. So 
One of the things that you should turn on is the giveaway size because team fundraisers really like to create matching shirts with their team name, just like regular race teams. Brian stole my thunder this morning, but we have fundraiser refunds. So one of the things that you can do is it's kind of like a donation discount, but it's the reverse. So maybe someone doesn't have the $50 or $100 or if the minimum is $500, they don't have that up front. So they can't make that donation. You can turn on fundraiser refunds. So I sign up to fundraise. I create a fundraising page. I pay my $150 registration fee. Once I have shared my fundraising page and earned that $500 minimum or whatever it is, I'll automatically get a refund of my registration fee. So during the registration process, there's a box that says, would you like to automatically be refunded when you meet the $500 minimum threshold? There's a surprising number of people that actually opt out of that. They don't want the refund. It's about 15% of people don't want the refund. But still, it does encourage people to go above and beyond that fundraising minimum. And I highly recommend it. We have some information about that in our next presentation. And then just like you want to customize the donation confirmation email, you also want to customize your fundraising confirmation email. We have some default text in there, but just like everywhere else, on the donation and the fundraising settings, take the time to add some extra verbiage that's specific to your race or your mission. Some things you can do, add a thank you, super obvious, but do it. And then tips and tricks. People will create a fundraising page and then instantly lose motivation because they like the idea of fundraising, but they don't know where to start. So just two or three tips and tricks of how to get started, as simple as create a Facebook fundraiser, share your page on Facebook, go to your run sign up profile, use our email templates, things like that. That's where the newsletters also help. You can say, last month, Kathy raised $5,000 by putting on a, what would you do? a benefit at soup plantation or whatever. So people don't think about things like that. So sharing other people's success stories can help keep your fundraisers motivated along the way. And then fundraiser email templates. So once you have fundraising turned on from your race dashboard, you can set up donation email templates. There's three different kinds. There's a donation request template, a join my team template, and then a donation thank you template. You can add as many different variations of each one of these templates as you want, and they will show in the send emails tab of someone's fundraising management center from the profile. And here's an example, donation email template. There's a drop down. You could have 15 different templates. They can choose from it. I don't recommend having that many. That's a little bit overwhelming, but Comb and Twin Cities, they do a good job of this. And then you give it a subject. It's just like that default fundraising message where they can add to it, change it, update it, delete it. It just gives them a starting off point to make it easier for them to ask for donations and share your mission. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. So this is an email template that we can set up ahead of time that our charity fundraisers, our people who are raising money, can actually go in, get access to, and send it to people? Yes, okay. exactly. Are you gonna tell us how they do that? Sure, I can show you after this. <clears throat> we'll go back to that. Yeah, so just like some races don't know how to ask for donations, Fundraisers don't know how. A lot of them don't know how. They don't know where to start. So this is a great place for them to start. And then communicate with your fundraisers. I keep using Semper Fi Fund as an example because I've worked with them for 10 years. Every single confirmation email, they include a direct contact person, which is usually Michelle. So they might not ever need to reach out to Michelle, but just having... Her direct email gives them, makes it easier for them. They know that they have someone to reach out to for help. So put a direct contact email. If you don't want to put a direct person, create a general email. Fundraising support at whatever. 
but make it a different person than your customer service team. So vacation races, they also have a dedicated charity person. That is their sole job, to reach out to their fundraisers, help them with tips and tricks. So talk to them along the way, hold their hand. Okay, Facebook fundraising, my favorite. So Allison's Facebook fundraising presentation is going to be tomorrow at 10.45. So if you have Facebook fundraising enabled, when your registration is complete and you have created your fundraising page, there's a pop-up that appears after registration. Link your fundraising page to Facebook. You have to be logged into Facebook. You click it. Done. That's how easy it is. If you didn't do it during or after registration, you can go into your fundraising center, you can go to your fundraising page when you're logged in to run sign up. There is a button, connect your fundraising page to Facebook, you click it, done. Facebook does the rest. Our new run sign up and Facebook fundraising integration is so crazy simple. My mom was able to do it, so that's just saying. She doesn't even have an iPhone. She just learned how to send a picture message yesterday. So as Ryan was saying this morning, Facebook prioritizes fundraising pages. They use their own algorithm to highlight them. So fundraising to them is more important than whatever you have to say to your friends and family members. So they use their own algorithm to show your fundraising page. They also... If you've ever been on Facebook and you see there's three days left of Allison's birthday fundraiser, they're going to keep doing that with your fundraising page. They're going to keep showing it. A couple months ago, we were setting up a test fundraising page and Bob accidentally shared it to Facebook. And within like two hours, he had $120 in donations accidentally. So yeah, Facebook does the work for you. And then... Here's some stats from the next presentation, but I cheated and put them on this slide, <laughs> on this presentation. So Semper Fi Fund, they started using our Run Sign Up Facebook fundraising integration in July of this year. They did not have any integration in 2018. Huge increase, but I also think it's interesting. So I don't know what Allison and Bob expected when they built the Facebook fundraising integration, but I always thought that it would just be a ton of $5, $10 donations. And it's so impressive to see the amount of donations that are higher dollar amounts. So that 70% of donations that process on run sign up that are under $25, it's just so interesting that the, like for Semper Fi Fund, their average donation amount from a Facebook donation was $53. And the best part about it is that the Facebook processing fees are free. So if these donations would have processed on run sign up, there would have been our 4% processing fee, which is still very low and I'm super proud of it, but zero is less than four. So <laughs> <laughs> we like zero. Does yes. Facebook pay us or does the money go through y'all and come to Facebook us? would pay you. Okay. So we kind of just covered it, but they create their fundraising page, pop up prompts them to connect their fundraising page to a Facebook fundraiser, then it's done. Then Facebook uses their algorithm to do the rest. Obviously, it doesn't hurt to customize that fundraising notification email to prompt them to share their Facebook fundraiser or their run sign up fundraiser either way. And that's, that's what I had, but we have some extra time. So any questions that you have, or actually I think we wanted to go over setting up those fundraiser templates. Question. Sure. Facebook pays the charity or the event? So they would pay the charity. You have to be a nonprofit to use the Facebook fundraising integration. Yes. Yes. So we cannot ever refund someone more than they paid. You have two options. So some people do partial refunds, some do full refunds just for the registration fee. And then you can check that box to make sure they don't receive a refund for any of the 
the merchandise that they paid for. So, um, always a set amount, yes, it's always a set amount. I have a question. Sure. I'm just learning about the automated emails. Mm -hmm. can, is the fundraising included in those emails that we can set up in that automation process? It is not. Okay. But registration follow-up emails work really well for that. Mm -hmm. So we usually recommend using the registration follow-up emails to really promote the referral program. Philadelphia Marathon, they're the perfect example because they have a really robust, very generous referral program, but they also have, they partner with American Association for Cancer Research. So they have a one-day interval set up to promote the referral program and then a seven-day interval set up to promote fundraising. So a few different things. Have you already created a Facebook page? If not, you can do that here. If you've already created a Facebook page, don't forget to link it to Facebook fundraising. Here's some tips and tricks to get started. And then just some extra information about their organization. Oh, and then how to manage their fundraising page and run sign up. So you could use the registration follow-up emails for that. Okay, so once fundraising has been set up, you can go into emails and then new email template. So you could you would just create the email template and then once you have the template I think I lied yep so you would go to that you would create that template first and then from emails fundraiser email templates that's where you could click on add donation request template and here's where you would put that so, and then once you have templates set up, they will show here. They are broken down into sections. So then as a fundraiser from your Run Sign Up profile, actually next to any fundraising page from next to the profile, there's a send emails tab. When they click on that tab, it takes them to that, what I showed you for Komen, it takes you to the send emails tab where there's a drop down menu with all of the fundraiser email templates. Any questions about settings while I'm in the dashboard? I have a question about uh, emails. Uh, we use constant contact, which you know, to do like a newsletter. <laughs> so with the emails, you can put one picture as the header. Could you add more pictures within yeah. the text? Okay. So I'm just going to you can add as many pictures as you want. So we actually, in our WYSIWYG, you would just click on image and upload the image, and then it would insert it into the body of the email. And then, so these email templates are all optimized for mobile, our new email templates. We have our legacy email templates, which are kind of optimized for mobile, but whenever you see this pretty layout with the sign up and the donate buttons up at the top, those are our new email templates that are completely optimized for mobile. Yes. Um, you had mentioned earlier when you send a confirmation email that you could put a um, add donation link into that confirmation email. Where do you pull that link from? So you would just go to the race page. So whenever you're on your dashboard, you can click view website and it uh -huh. takes you to the race page. This is the donate link. Okay, so just click on donate and copy that. Mm -hmm. okay. In addition to that, you mentioned that you can put a tab on the front. Yes. So do you have any custom sections? No. Hmm. You have a cover page. Okay, so. I'm just going to go here really quick. From registration, from race, registration, race, race page, race, race page, custom sections. You can add, so she actually does have a custom section for test. So you would add whatever text you wanted here. Did you know we're raising money for 
blah, blah, blah. Once you have this custom section, you can go to race, race page, and then custom content display. So if I change that to display as new menu item, that becomes a custom section on the race page or a tab on the race page. Do you want me to? Okay. <laughs> Don't say that. Okay. This trackpad is different from mine. Okay, so I made it its own menu tab, and there it is. So actually, one example I'll show you of just what you can do with cover pages. So this is Woodlands Marathon. They moved over their entire website to their run sign up race. And this is a run sign up cover page. But you can see at the top, these are all custom sections that they have set up and made into menu tabs. So they have a lot of information, but it just shows that there really isn't a limit. Okay, now that my presentation is over, I'm finally feeling not nervous, so <laughs> that was great timing, but all right. Well, I'll, oh, great. Well, I'll be around if you ever have any questions, and then our demo room has tables that I could help with set up stuff too, where I can help. All right. Thank <laughs> you.